Hello, hello, still snowing. Welcome to my pink cat on the definition, or on the topic, I'm sorry, of long-term liabilities. And our goal for today, I like having a goal, keeps me from being drifty. And I can do shiny objects with the best of them. Look, here goes one now. Our goal for today, our goal is to learn to do accounting for loans where the principal payment is held constant and the interest expense and the cash vary. The timeline, or the facts for our loan is it's a three-year loan, 10% interest. We're going to borrow $45,000, and the timeline will look like this. I think timelines help. They at least help me get a grasp on what's going on. This is year one, year two, year three. We're going to borrow $45,000 right here. And if we're going to make equal principal payments, then 45000 divided by 3 will have us paying down 15000 a year off the loan. The end of each year for three years, and when we make that third payment, the loan balance will be zero. Because 45 minus 15 minus 15 minus 15 is zero. I would like to start by analyzing, and to analyze this situation, we need to do an amortization schedule. And I want to make that schedule with you. So let me put this on pause. I'll put down the column heading so it will go a little faster. So here's our amortization schedule column headings. We'll have the date so we can keep track of where we are. We'll have a beginning balance. That will make it easier to calculate. We'll have a principal portion of each payment, an interest portion of each payment. We'll have the total payment, which is the sum of the principal and the interest. And we'll have an ending balance. First, we start with borrowing the money. And let's start our loan on 12-31-13 when we borrow $45,000. And so there's our first line of the amortization schedule. We're currently right here. We go a year, travel through a year, and we'll make our first payment. That will be on 12-31-14. Our beginning loan balance is $45,000. Our principal portion is going to be 15000 That's never going to vary because we're holding that constant. Interest is calculated on the balance. 45000 times 10%. That's why I picked it easy to see in your head. $4,500. Our total payment then will be made up of principal, 15000 and interest, 4500 for a total of $19,500. Now let's look at our ending balance. On your ending balance, you only get to subtract your principal. You don't get to take the whole payment. Think about how your loans work. You don't get to take the whole payment because the bank gets their cut. Your part is $15,000. So we'll take that off, the principal off. And you'll see that the loan balance is now 30. So we're not taking off the whole amount, we're taking off the principal amount. That takes us to this point in time. Let's move out another year, 12, 31, 15. Our loan balance is 30. Our principal payment is what it always is, 15,000. Interest will be calculated on our loan balance, which is 30,000. 10% of 30000 is 3000 How much will our total payment be? Well, we have to pay the principal of 15 plus the interest of 3 and it's 18 and You can see now that both the, both the interest and the total payment are varying under this approach. 
payments are getting smaller. 30,000 30, minus our principal portion, and remember it's always the principal portion. You don't really put that 15 on an amortization schedule. I'm just drawing your attention to the fact you don't get the whole payment. I know why I'm doing this line by showing how I did the math. That takes us to this point on our timeline. We have one more payment to make. We said three, so 12, 31, 16. My new loan balance is 15,000. I'm bringing it over from this total. So the principal portion needs to be 15,000. It's been held constant. Interest on the beginning balance of 15,000 will be 1,500. 10% 10 of 15,000. Total payment will be principal plus interest, 16500 And I am now paid off the loan, and it has a zero balance, and I am here on my timeline. So this is an amortization schedule where the principal payments are held constant. Let's total things. Our total principal payments will equal 45000 That is how much we borrow. Our total interest will equal 9000 if you add up this column. So our total payments will be the sum of our principal and our interest. 45000 plus 9000 is 54000 But you could also add up this column and it would give you 54000 so we've now finished analyzing this one. It's time to make the journal entries. Analyze and then journalize and it keeps you out of trouble. Let's start with our first line. Let's borrow the money cash and notes payable. Now we get to use that money, hopefully on long-term kinds of needs, buy equipment or something, a car. It is 1231, and the year is 2013. I kind of have to squeeze that in. I didn't leave much room for my dates. I'll scoot them over. So we borrow the money. Then we get to the end of the first year on our timeline. We make our first payment. It's now 12 31 14. And we'll have notes payable having a principal portion. We'll have interest expense having the interest portion. And we'll have cash. We'll take the numbers right off of our amortization schedule. So we're on that first payment. Principal's 15,000. Interest expense is forty five hundred and cash is nineteen thousand five hundred. That takes us to the end of our first year. Let's have another year pass and get out to the end of our second year and see what happens here. Our entries laid out before us twelve thirty one fifteen. Notes payable always gets that 15000 Interest expense is going to vary because the loan payment's coming down. It will be 3000 15000 plus 3000 is the total cash hit of 18000 And that takes us through the second year. Now let's get ourselves through the third year where we pay off the loan. Twelve. 31, 16. I always like it when a loan gets paid off, don't you? Principal, 15 G's. I guess it's 15 K. Interest. Each year it's dropping. Interest expense, 1500. And the cash payment will be 16,500. So you use the amortization schedule where you analyze the transactions to get your entries for all the years. I want to do two things. I want to show you, first of all, 
what happens to notes payable. And then I want to look at it on the balance sheet. So there's our notes payable. It's long term. Let's post it first. We borrow the money. I post that action. Then we make a principal payment of 15000 And our loan balance is thirty. And then we make another principal payment of 15000 Remember, principal's being held constant. And our new loan balance is fifteen. And then we make our last principal payment of 15000 And our new loan balance is zero. So that's what it looks like when you post it to the general ledger. Let's look at how it looks on the balance sheet. And for purposes of this one, I'm going to see how it looks on the balance sheet at the end of the first year. So we haven't made, or when we borrow it, we've just borrowed the money and we haven't made any payments. Let's look at long-term debt, or first let's put down current liabilities. And then let's look at long-term debt because it's going to show up in both places. If you'll recall from your earlier accounting class. So we're looking at our balance sheet at this point in time. We have a notes payable in the amount of $45,000. It's $12,31.13. And we would subtract from it the current portion, the amount that must be paid out of current assets next year, is 15000 And notice I'm grabbing just the principal portion, because it's just the principal portion that comes off. You have, at this point in time, not incurred any interest. Interest is incurred with the passage of time, and on day one, you have none. So the long-term debt portion of this loan is 30000 And under current liabilities, you would have current portion of your long-term debt, long-term debt, and it would show 15000 So that's the principal payment due next year. And the 15000 of the current liabilities plus the 30000 of the long-term debt equals their total liabilities and notes payable at this point in time, 45000 So remember on the balance sheet, all long-term notes payable are split to their current portion and their long-term portion. So, now you've learned the accounting for what to do when the principal payment is held constant and the interest in the cash vary. You've looked at analyzing, you've looked at journalizing, you've looked at the general ledger, and you've looked at how it shows up on the balance sheet. Nice job. Let's move on.